Well, for many people, it's shaping up to be a December to remember to wrap up 2023. For the fifth week in a row, we've seen significant weekly declines in wholesale prices reported by BlackBook. Welcome to the Homework Guide channel, where thanks to feedback from channel members, we have the privilege of bringing you some of the latest and most exciting automotive news. I'm your host, Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, and right across from me is none other than the amazing Elizabeth, or as one of our channel members, Jay, recently called her, TAE. Yeah, he messaged me with TAE and caught me by surprise, but I like it. All right, car buyers, are you ready for some great car news? We've been directly witnessing that the tides are finally turning for real in the auto industry, and we've been able to see it happen right before our very eyes, thanks to our regular involvement with channel members. We've been seeing steady weekly declines in car prices and a lot more interest by dealers to cut prices, drop add-ons, and even eliminate those fees. That's right, and we're going to tell you exactly how to do that. Reports are flooding in from channel members we've been coaching into some incredible deals. And with most new cars, we're talking about well below manufacturer suggested retail price, MSRP. Used prices are tumbling fast right now, too. You know, dealers are finally dealing, and we've got all the juicy details for you. From sedans to SUVs, the deals being signed are unbelievable, given where things were at not long ago. Before we get down to business, let me share with you a sweet little picture I took of our daughter, Grace. She was born while I was in the hospital two years ago. She woke up early Friday morning with me to see Clifford the Big Red Dog. <laughs> the sweet little smile on her face shows you how much she enjoys that show. Just irresistible. Okay, back at it. If you're in the market for a car, this is not time to miss out on the action. Hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to stay updated on all things related to cars. Let's rev up and dive in today's exciting topic, steady car price declines and the return of interest by car dealers to wheel and deal. As we reported on November 19th from Black Book, last month opened with significant weekly price drops that has carried over here into December. Just this past week alone, we saw a sharp continuation of significant weekly declines with the market accelerating its depreciation into the holidays. Despite robust auction attendance, ample inventory and strong conversion rates, sellers are now dropping their reserve prices, which is causing the market to grapple with establishing a post-pandemic new normal. That's an excellent sign. Yep. Here's some of the data. The wholesale car markets are in a state of free fall. In a single week, car segments are down an average of 2.4%, which amounts to a $360 drop this week on top of last week's drop of 1.82%. The zero to two year car segments were down another 1.82%, while the eight to 16 year old cars declined 2.44%. All nine car segments decreased last week with four of those segments reporting declines beyond 2%. Compact cars, which were so hard to get for so long, had the largest decline, with a record-breaking single-week depreciation of 4.32%. If you're looking for a used compact car on average, buyers at the auction paid $482 less this week alone to acquire those vehicles. This is on the heels of the previous week's already incredible large depreciation of 3.84%. It was a record set last week and a record set again this yes. week. The sporty car segment is also accelerating the rate of depreciation, declining 3.32% last week, adding to the week's prior decline of 2.05%. That means sporty cars are down $717 in price this week alone. Those are becoming meaningful numbers. The truck segment is also improving for car buyers, which includes crossovers, SUVs, and vans as well. It had already dropped sharply in November, but still dropped another 1.64% this week, which is about $330 and 1.35% the week before. The zero to two year old models declined 1.48% on average and the eight to 16 year olds decreased 1.51% on average. All 13 truck segments saw price drops last week. Four of the 13 segments had declines greater than 2%. Full size luxury SUVs had another week with depreciation exceeding 3% with a decline of 3.81%, adding to the 3.2% drop the previous week. That's a drop of $1,536 this week alone. So if you've been waiting for a full-size loaded SUV, now might be the great time to make your move. In the midst of all this action, here's what we're coaching our channel members to do. Shop a wide demographic of dealers and request out the door pricing using the out the door email templates found on our website. You can and should modify the template to meet your specific situation. The email strategy works with either new or used. Let's jump into why the email OTD strategy is so important. Using the out-the-door price in negotiations with car dealers can be a highly effective strategy to get great prices on vehicles. It's also great for getting dealers to drop add-ons and unnecessary fees. Here's how you leverage this approach. First, 
understand what the OTD price means. The OTD price is the total cost of the car, including all taxes, dealer fees, and any additional charges. But don't be worried immediately about details and costs that you can get rid of later because that's exactly what you're going to do before you buy. This price offer gives you a clear and comprehensive understanding of what you'll actually pay rather than just the sticker price of the vehicle. Of course, always do your homework. Before ever stepping into a showroom, research the make, model, and year of the car you're interested in. Use resources like Edmunds, Kelly Blue Book, Consumer Reports, or a membership with us to understand the car's actual value and reliability. Know the value of your trade-in, if you have one, by checking its true market value on sites like Edmunds, or getting a cash offer from KBB, or using many of the methods that we presented clearly in this video titled, Get the Book Value of Your Own Car. The point of all of this is getting quotes in advance. Contact several dealers via phone or email to request OTD price quotes for the car you're interested in. This approach helps you avoid emotional buying decisions and puts you in a much stronger position to negotiate. As always, the focus is on price, not the payment. Always concentrate on the total out-the-door price, not monthly payments. Dealers can manipulate monthly payments in various ways that are rarely ever in your best interest. Pretty much never. Yeah. This is really important. Use your OTD responses to create a bidding war between dealers. Contact multiple dealerships and ask for their best OTD price for the specific car you want. Use the quotes from one dealer as leverage with others to see if they can beat the price. If you didn't hear from a given dealer in the beginning, go back to them with your other offers and say, meet or beat this to be in the running. Always say, I'm working with other dealers and I'm looking for someone who wants to earn my business. Watch the add-ons and fees just disappear. Be ready to walk away if the dealer plays games. If a dealer isn't willing to meet your price, be prepared to walk away. Often they may call you back with a better offer later. Say no to last minute extras. Dealers often try to add extra services or warranties in the final stages of the deal. Stick to your negotiated OTD price and decline any additional offers that aren't necessary. Stand firm on what you want and you'll get it. Finalize the deal. Once you have a satisfactory OTD price, you can go to the best dealer and finalize payment. It's advisable to have your pre-approved financing from your own bank or credit union. Remember the key to successful OTD negotiation is preparation, knowing what you're buying and being ready to pit one dealer against the other with the OTD prices you are collecting. This approach simplifies the negotiation process because the dealers do the price cutting for you, thereby helping you avoid overpaying for unnecessary fees or add-ons. Also, asking dealers about their aged inventory is always a good move, and it will likely net you an even better deal. So why the big differences in pricing between certain vehicle segments and in certain areas? While it's clear the overall market is trending downward in value, the wholesale value of cars and trucks can vary for a variety of reasons, including these factors. Market demand. Your own preferences play a significant role. If a particular style or type of vehicle falls out of favor, its wholesale value can decline rapidly. For example, large SUVs might lose value if there's a trend toward more fuel-efficient vehicles. And fuel prices. Changes in fuel prices can significantly affect the value of certain vehicle segments. For instance, when fuel prices are high, the value of larger, less fuel-efficient vehicles typically drops, while smaller, more efficient cars retain or even increase in their value. Technological advancements. As new technology becomes standard in newer models, like advanced safety features, electric powertrains, etc., older models without these features may decline in value. Economic factors. Broader economic conditions always have an impact. In a strong economy, luxury and high-end vehicles hold their value better, while in a weaker economy, more affordable segments fare better. Availability of newer models. The release of new models can affect the prices of older models. If a dealer is heavy with next year's models, that helps you get the current year cars cheaper. Yes, there are regional preferences. So in some regions, certain types of vehicles are more popular due to climate, geography, or culture, which can affect their value. Then there's seasonal factors. Some vehicles are more in demand during certain seasons. Four-wheel drive vehicles are more valuable in winter, while convertibles and sport cars are more sought after in summer. Understanding these factors can help in predicting which car or truck segments might decline in wholesale value. As of late 2023, the car market is showing signs of moving towards normalization, but there's no doubt that it will take some time to get back in line with pre-pandemic conditions. For you EV lovers, the news is very good. Prices of used EVs are dropping by a whopping 29.5% in value. This drop is attributed to reduced demand for new EVs, leading to significant discounting in the segment and affecting the residual values of existing EVs. 
Overall, the car market in 2023 is closer to normal compared with the height of the pandemic, but it still faces some challenges and uncertainties, particularly in terms of pricing in various regional pockets around the country. The market is definitely showing signs of stabilization, but it's also clear that some of the changes brought on by the pandemic will have longer lasting effects. Here's a quick look at rates of inflation over the last few years. 2019 was 2.3%, 2020 was 1.2%, 2021 was 4.7%. 2022 is 7.1%. 2023, also 7.1%. Ouch. This puts the cumulative inflation from 2019 to 2023 at 23.64% overall. What $100 bought in 2019 now takes $123.64 to buy today. For cars, it's even worse. But it's important to note that the rise in car prices since 2019 has been influenced by more than just the general inflation rate. Shortage of supplies have artificially pushed prices higher and a significant correction is finally underway. Now for some news on new car inventory. As of late 2023, the car manufacturers with the most available inventory, especially in the larger pickup trucks and SUVs, include Ford. The Ford F-150 with an inventory of 60,378 units, primarily in Texas. Other models with big inventory include the Ford Escape, Ford Edge, Ford Explorer, and the Ford Mach-E. And then there's Chevy models like the Chevy Silverado 1500 with 38,072 units mostly in Detroit and the Chevy Equinox also largely in Detroit. For Nissan, the Nissan Rogue has a big inventory of 30,379 units with a lot of it in New York. And then there's Ram. The Ram 1500 is also among the vehicles with high inventory, 21,443 in Detroit. For Dodge, models like the Dodge Charger, 18,820 units, and Dodge Challenger, 14,235 units, have significant inventories. And then Mazda, the Mazda CX-5 with 17,440 units, mainly in New York, is also big. For Honda, the CRV and Honda Accord are their top inventory models. And then Toyota, the Toyota RAV4 and Toyota Camry have the biggest inventory levels. For the most current and region-specific inventory information and for your area, it's advisable to check with services like TrueCar.com and RealCarTips.com. Friends, if you feel you lack the skills to run the sales process gauntlet and you're hungry for a car deal like we've described, get me and Liz in your corner by becoming a member on our YouTube channel today and have us talk you through to success. To get this kind of direct involvement, sign up for the consults level today at $49.99 and then reach out to Kevin right away at his cell phone number posted in our members only community page. What's extra special is that you won't just get stuck with a homework guy staffer to work with you, you actually get us. Nobody else on YouTube offers this. If you're a member of our channel, we've really enjoyed working with you and you made today's show possible. Thank you for that. Also, thanks again to our many faithful followers who just keep coming back and to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homer Guy, signing off with the amazing Elizabeth, the Homer Gal. The Homer Guy team is serving truth, justice, and transparency in the car business and always will. We've we got to go. go. You can't go! All of